Dr. Levitt, can can you talk about PCR testing? Yeah, I just want to. Yeah. So, I, I firstly I agree with everything that's been said before. Um, it's important to point out that PCR testing is not used for has never really been used widely uh, on the scale, and you can do a thought experiment about if during the flu season two years ago you had done PCR testing, you probably would have found that very large numbers of the population were flu positive because really flu does get around a lot. Uh, so I think that uh, it, we're, we're basically not experienced about what it means to track a disease uh, by PCR. We're also not experienced about what it means to track a disease by contact tracing. I think the problem with contact tracing uh, for COVID and for all respiratory infections is that essentially you don't get it by touching somebody. You get it by being near somebody, maybe being in the same room as somebody. And as a result, uh, there are many, many different paths of contact tracing. Uh, diseases like Ebola, uh, you really have to get very, very close to somebody. I think this was also true of, of the 2003 SARS. So I think uh, somebody has said to me that uh, contact tracing is expecting people to be wired together Whereas COVID is a bit like Wi-Fi, you know, you get near somebody, you feel their Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. Um, but I think PCR, you know, is is interesting. I wonder whether we're going to use PCR for flu in the future. Um, I think there were a number of novel things here that seem to make perfect sense and give people a feeling of empowerment, like contact trace, test everybody. Um, but I think I felt from the very beginning that testing was. So there are certain people who really believe that testing is the solution to everything. And I'm not one of them.